Hello everyone, JRD on 96 here with a brand new reaction. As you can tell by the title, it's another Jack Septiguy video and it's another weird, interesting one that kind of caught my attention, but I just haven't had a chance to check it out. And that is this personality te test that he took. But based on the title, it says he takes the same exact one three years later. But so I gotta probably have to look up the original one after this and see if he answers it the same way or whatever. Or maybe I should have just reacted to the very to the original one first and then check out the new one. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, it's kind of too late now to turn back now, is it? So let's just get right into it and see how he does on this personality test. So without further ado, let's react to this video, shall we? Oh boy! <laughs> how the winds of change flow past us, through us, around us, and after years, we become completely different people. Three years ago, I took a personality test, the 16 personalities personality test. The one that people say is one of the more accurate ones and the one that everybody does and everybody wants to know what letters represent you the most. Now, the last time I did this, Oh, hi, tiny baby Jacksepticeye. Hi, green man. Luminescent tennis ball head. I got the ENFJA, and I saw somebody suggest this recently, saying Jack should take it again to see how much he has changed, and that is a fair statement. I think that that's a great idea, because these personality tests are fine. They're a fun little thing to see what type of personality you have. You're always going to answer them in a certain way, because it's hard to get exactly who you are as a person, out of a test like this, but it's it's fun to see. But, I mean, in three to five years, you're going to change as a person anyway. A lot yeah. of your core morals might stay the same, but people change all the time. So I'm curious to see if we get a different result than this one. If we get the same result, then boy howdy am I about to waste your time. Alright, <laughs> it's easy. It's fast and easy, it takes less than 12 minutes. Yeah, no. My video is probably like 40 minutes long and it be yourself and answer honestly even if you don't like the answer and complete it all try not to leave any neutral answers. You got it sentient disembodied test. All right, you enjoy vibrant, vibrant social, social events, events with, with lots, lots of people. people. Um yes. Nah. I leave a blank for that one time that I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to see anybody. I don't want to be on my own and play video games. Uh, I'm more yes, like a, I uh, very much guy enjoy that wants social to be on I like conventions, I, I hang out with my friends, I like all of that stuff. People give me energy. I love them. You often spend time exploring unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. The fuck does that mean? Exactly. Yeah? Well, define exploring them. Is thinking about them? Exploring them? I don't know. Or doing I sit them? there most times looking at the internet going, Wow, I'd love to do something like that. So I'd love yeah, to do something I with guess. him. Like, <laughs> Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Um, oh wait, are more likely to look like a rough list. No, nah. I don't actually make that many travel plans. A lot of the travel plans really that I travel, make revolve so around I conventions really and stuff. But when it comes to traveling, it's usually work-related or like going to see friends or stuff. I don't plan that many trips. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after it has taken place. Yes. Yeah, I do. Not sometimes. too much anymore. I used to do that a lot, where I'd sit awake and be like, "Man, I should have said this. I should have said that." These days, I'm a lot more mellowed <laughs> out, and I'm like, you know what? Conversations go sideways all the time. Do people misconstrue what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you're a normal person and everybody talks shit all the time and people don't care. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct to support them emotionally and not try to solve their problem. Yes. Yes, I that's what I do on that. a regular basis. I used to always be like, well, why don't you just do this? Because I was always like a matter of fact thing. I tried to cheer got them to up. learn about myself and other people and how to deal with sad. others and things like that. You just, sometimes people are like, fuck off. All I want to do is complain. And you know what? That's fine. Friends, I am here to vent to. You're allowed to do that. People can rarely upset you. This is an interesting one. Ooh. Because I feel like I'm very much a, a people pleaser and always have been. Before it was I like, don't know about oh me. god, no. Any sideways comment that came my way. Like, I would, I would have my whole day ruined by like one or two comments that were on my videos. And nowadays it's like, ah, I don't have the energy for this. 
I'm also curious what I answered in the last video that I did. If any of these answers are different yet. Because back then, I definitely feel like I was answering the questions knowing that people were watching me. <laughs> these answers are a lot more honest and a lot more upfront. This this probably would be in here, but I they said try not to leave any neutral answers. So I'm leaning a little bit more towards this end. But yeah. How, how am I doing so far? Am I the same? Am I different? You have to rely on other people to be the ones to start a conversation and keep it going. Mm, no. I'm, I'm pretty good at keeping up with conversations. Again, I'm very sociable, so whenever we're out in places, I don't like small talk, but I my dislike for small talk is smaller than my dislike for awkward silences. <laughs> you really worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. I used to worry a lot about yeah, I worry how too. I came across with people, and that kind of ties back into the going over conversations in my head a lot. I, I still do care. I mean, I think everyone kind of cares about what sort of impression they make on people. But it's not as oh, important not to me. A bad influence. Because if I meet somebody for the first time and that's kind of the only sort of times we meet them, then it doesn't really matter what my impression's going to be. I'm rarely going to hang out with them again anyway. But if it's somebody that I feel like I'm going to become friends with and we, we're going to regularly or semi-regularly hang out, then the first impression, I feel like I can, like, a bad first impression I feel like can be fixed and solved. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. No. I can definitely entertain myself. Yeah. Do you realize how much jerking off you can do? No. I have resourceful. I have a lot of stuff that I can do. I can do work. I can do... I don't need to explain this shit. You know what? I, that's my problem. Oh, that Jesus over explain Christ. Because I'm recording it and I'm like, oh, people need the information. No, you don't. This is my answer. Fuck you! You are more of a detail-oriented than big picture, picture person. person. Uh, no, I'm not detail-oriented at all. I like concepts. I like ideas. I like putting them into practice, but I do not meticulously do anything because I am garbage at that. Again, detail-oriented work where you have to like sit down and be like, okay, do this and then do this and this and this. I'm terrible at that. My accountant fucking hates me because I can never get all the documents together on time. Whenever I'm working on stuff, I'm like, I don't do it when the when the feeling strikes me. You are very affectionate with people you care about. Yes. I am an incredibly emotional and empathetic person, and I share my feelings a lot. You have a careful and methodical approach to life. Uh, no. Uh. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I am all over the place. I mean, that's kind of the fun of it. I like the spontaneity of things. And again, the planning aspect of travel comes back to this, where I don't really like planning too far in advance. Yeah, because I, I just don't like, like to trying see to plan what out. happens when it's happening because I like to flow through the energy of it rather than planning stuff too far ahead because then I have something in my head and it's like, oh, this thing is coming up and now I have to worry about this thing and I can't do anything between now and then because all I can do is... Today, good example. Today, a package came where I got a cable that split one cable into two cables. It was coming at 4 p.m. I waited around from m noon <laughs> waiting for this fucking thing to come. It was going to come before then. But I sat around being like, no, I can't record yet. What if that comes? It's like, even if it came, he's just going to throw it over the fence. <laughs> but I sat around I'm like, no, this is a deadline that's in my head. I need to sit around and wait for this. Does that contradict me? Is that a methodical approach to life? I'd say that that's a clumsy, stupid approach because I could be getting so much more done. You were still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. Uh, uh, I mean, this is some... very heavily dependent on the mistake. Like, yeah. if I fought with somebody or punched someone, I've never punched someone in my entire life. Not, like, no. in the face, in the arm or whatever, yeah. But those kinds of mistakes, yeah, if I, like, really hurt somebody, then I'm going to be bothered by that. But, like, I mean, no. I don't really have any mistakes in my head that I overly think about. Uh, there are no. things that that error, you know? I would There's always change. a couple of regrets, but... Not too much to, like, keep me up at night. At parties and similar events, you can mostly be found further away from the action. Uh, yeah. Nah. Yeah, most I like, likely. I'll be, like, like the outcast in, in the party. Just talk to people and see what's <laughs> going on. I rarely, like, hide away. You also find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. Um, no. Do I? I don't know. This is a weird question. How am I going to answer this? You often find it difficult to relate oh, to God, people who let their emotions guide them. Uh, no, because I let my emotions guide me a lot, so I'm not going to judge somebody else for doing that. Is it the smart decision? Who knows? <laughs> it's where my heart is sailing. I'm looking for a movie to watch. You can spend ages browsing the catalog. Yes, because yeah. I don't get a lot of time. A lot of my time is spent making videos. Yeah, I don't have time, time to watch work stuff, movie. emails and calls and all that shit. 
So, <laughs> I shouldn't say shit. People are going to be like, is he not enjoying his job? <laughs> but a lot of my time is spent doing it. And not a lot of time is spent doing, like, personal stuff. And when, when it comes to the, the evening, I like to pick out a movie. But I always want to make sure that I'm spending my time wisely with it. Because I don't want to put on a movie that I'm going to forget in five minutes or just not pay attention to or want to be on my phone during. So I, I spend a long time going through the movies to make sure that it's something that I'm actually going to want to watch. You can stay calm under a lot of pressure. I don't know about that for me. Yes. It depends on the pressure. If it's like a health-related pressure, I, I sometimes freak out. Like, especially like now when everything's going on, like any sort of wheeze or cough is like, is this it? Is this yeah, the big yeah. one? The big job? Oh, oh god, Simon Hay. Strapping in? But when it comes to like touring and that stuff, the pressure never got to me. I kind of reveled in it. So let's go with this one. When in a group of people you don't know, you have no problem jumping right into the conversation. Yep. I have no problems with that. Sometimes. I think that's one of my strengths as a person. One of my stronger traits in my personality is that I'm able to read people incredibly well. I'm able to read the energy and the dynamic of the group and the body language really well. Where I can like blend into the conversation and kind of find out the base level of humor and then attach myself to that and go along with it. I'm very, I'm very quick to pick up what's going on and not make things awkward. Of course, that doesn't happen every time, but <laughs> I'm usually fairly good about that. I, I'm a very social person. When you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. Yes, yeah, I dream that I a die a lot. I had a dream that a cat came in last night and started fighting with BB, and that was the whole dream. And that's not... Fantastical. Mine's kind of like weird as shit. Your opinion I don't is, know how to it is sometimes them. okay to step on others to get ahead in life. No, I don't like that. Especially doing YouTube, you see people. Oh boy! Imagine if I just dropped it all. What if I just dropped all the tea right now? This person's an asshole. This. <laughs> no. Oh, but whenever I see people do that, I, I just don't like it. It just. It just rots me to my core. I don't like... Because they're... It's not the only way of doing things. You can be a nice person. You can get along with people. And you can still get ahead. And it doesn't have to be a thing where it's like me or them. It can be both of you. It doesn't... Rising tide, all ships, that kind of thing. You don't have for to sure. step over people to get ahead for yourself. Uh, you are dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. I'm yeah, always getting sidetracked. I get pretty sidetracked whenever i have like stuff that i want to do and i yeah. really want to do and i'm passionate about i definitely do them and then i get sidetracked but by procrastination I leave a room for like i leave a lot of room for life to happen i don't want to be so oriented that work and focus on goals and just sheer focus is like the only thing that's going on in my life that's not fun i like i like when shit goes awry i like when things go yeah. tits up and you can kind of like mess with life and get jiggy with it. You know what I mean? Feel the energy, feel the vibe. God, I sound like a fucking hippie. If you make a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself, your abilities, or your knowledge. Uh, I yes. do. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt. I, I feel like I do. I that. actually doubt it now, I should start but make, I stop making that, video, uh, ego videos. I made a mistake and people called me out on it. I was like, oh God, no, everything's wrong. It's all over. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a dumbass. But at a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and most talk, mostly talk to the new ones you already know. Yes. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. I feel like I do that a lot. I have no problems walking up to people and starting a conversation if I have to. But if we are at a social thing, I usually just stick with the people I know. And then if we start talking to other people, then I'll mingle, you know, <laughs> dip in, dip out. You usually lose interest in the discussion when it gets philosophical. Oh, God, no. That's like my jam now. Philosophy, how people work, how they think, how, how the world came about, what is true happiness and true virtue. That's my fucking jam, bro. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. Heavy disagree. I cry all the time. <laughs> and not like, oh, you hurt my feelings, boo-hoo. Can I cry? <laughs> <laughs> boo <laughs> I don't say it like that. But more than like, we're watching a movie and it's sad. Guys, I'm having a moment! If you're more drawn to play something, <laughs> posting in busy atmospheres into more quiet, intimate ones. Ah, uh, this is, this is, this is like a, what am I feeling today kind of thing. If I'm in a work-oriented mode, then yes, bustling, busy atmosphere is one thing to get attracted to because you want to feel like you're you're moving, you're part of the gears, you're you're moving with society, and you're working and you're focused. But more often than not, I'm. I mean, when it comes to games and it comes to visual imagery and that kind of stuff, you guys know me by now that I'm more drawn to the more somber, quiet, like naturey type of stuff. But that's. Uh, what am I more drawn to? What am I more drawn to right now? It would be a nice, 
forest, maybe some snow and a cabin and a fire. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Some of these questions are all over the place. Anyway, when it comes to making life-changing choices, you, you mostly, mostly listen to your, your heart, heart rather than your head. head. Oh, do oh, I? Boy. Yes. I was trying. I was trying to think like what was the most life-changing thing that I've probably done in recent memory. And moving here to Brighton and buying my own house was probably one. Oh, wow. And I definitely was listening to my heart more than my head That'd be because very... I think. I was able to. Difficult choice That's for him. Like, like very, is it that could go wrong too soon or is it um, so the I, best I move, like my heart the best decision more. you could make? Would you prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive? No. No. It's it's too much energy. It's that thing that I, I've been reading a lot about stoicism recently and it's a lot of that stuff where like shit's happening and it's how you react to what's happening that is really going to change your brain. Like if you're gonna get sad about something, it's usually because you're indulging in these negative aspects of your life and these negative emotions. Whereas if you think about things objectively and it's just like, oh, somebody did something bad towards me, okay. It's that sort of like distance yourself from it. And if somebody is really awful to me, then I'm not gonna have you in my life. I'll try and understand where you came from, <laughs> but well, it's just revenge is just too much energy. Idiots. The time you spend by yourself often and ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with others. Not really. I mean, I can be productive in my time if I really put my brain to it, but a lot of times I just sit down and browse the internet. I'm not yeah. bettering myself <laughs> when I'm alone most times. It's just kind of like sitting down, relaxing, and having fun. Which I guess could be more interesting. Uh, yeah, let's go here. You tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. Huh. huh. No, no. I, I do... I look ahead. This is the thing about these questions is that some of them are phrased in a certain way and then I answer it a certain way. And then I don't try now this one is answering I'm like, wait, I feel like I I've answered this ahead. I already. I don't think about like what's going on now, on but I like right thinking about like, oh, I have this thing that now. I want to do. And oh, I look at it in the future. And, and, and all these things are like moving. And I was like, where's the channel going to be in this amount of time? Where are video games going to be? And will I ever make a movie? Those kinds of things. You often have a hard time understanding people's feelings. No. I feel like I'm pretty good at understanding why people act the way they act, just the way they take and why Sometimes they're doing certain things. I question why, in a project, why you they have to act so immature. No, I'm more of a like get stuck in and learn as we go type of person. And that's, that's just, part of my problem so is that, that I meet other people like, who are really, really good at like an the detail oriented work make? and the focus okay. to like get all the pillars in place before we start. Whereas I would literally just jump into the river and then learn how to swim for a lot of the stuff that I do. Uh, it's what I did with YouTube and there is a quality to that and I do like that about myself But if there's like a time crunch or a financial crunch or something like that That's not always the best way to go about something But it also leads to me putting off a lot of the ideas that I have oh. Because I'm waiting for that like right spark to really ignite the fire and then we that just jump in all burn to death together <laughs> When you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long will it be until they become disappointed in you To a certain degree, I used to care a lot more about that And I'm very curious what I answered on this the last time I did this Because I feel like it was a complete fucking lie Well, depending, because I cared very much about this So I, I always wondered about that I still, sometimes I kinda do, hence this like wiggle room if if people don't like me, I've put in... I'm, I feel like I'm a decent person. I've put in the efforts to talk to people. If they don't like me after that, then... Maybe it's just not meant to be, and that's fine. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Now, this depends on the person. Yeah, depends, like, yeah exactly. It depends on the person. Yes, but when I met Hideo Kojima, I was very nervous to go up and say something to him because of the language barrier and the translator and all that stuff, and I just... I, I don't know. It depends on the person. But I'd say I've gotten better at it. It's just... Depends yeah. on who. Well, I guess that was a different scenario because it was a language barrier more so than a more so than an understanding barrier. I what what's the term I'm looking for? You know what I mean. There was more to it. Even when you have a planned particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like at any given moment. Yeah, yes. that's I, definitely I, me. I sometimes write down a bunch of games. Sometimes I plan like try. Okay, I'll like, do like, this. And then me. I'm like, every time I do, do it, the next day I wake up and I'm like, okay, what did I write I down for a And then all of them, I'm like, I don't want to do that. I I'm being very good about it lately because any sort of idea that comes to my head, I'm being 
better about just doing whatever the fuck I want instead of worrying about all these other factors. I'm like, if it's a if it's a halfway tangible idea, just go for it, do it, whatever, and then see what happens. But a lot of times it's just like, whatever is happening, here we go. You find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Yes, again, I'm very good at like feeling the energy from another person and like bonding with that. Even if it's something that I have never gone through, I can usually get myself to a place where I can sort of figure it out. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Not anymore, because I understand them more. I, I, again, like the stoic philosophy of just like, it is, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> You still honor the commitments you have made even if you have a change of heart. No. And that's another thing that I've gotten better at as well is just saying no to things. Because before it was the idea of, well, if if I say no to this, then people might stop asking me to hang out. Whereas now it's like, no, I don't feel well or I'm busy or I just got other shit going on or I just don't feel like it. And that's, again, completely fine. You rarely feel insecure. Um... These days, yeah, rarely. Again, this will be interesting to see what I wrote in the last one, uh, because back then I was definitely insecure. <laughs> this is interesting. It's interesting to see how my brain has shifted to some of these. I'm still kind of over explaining some of them, but that's only because I'm recording and I feel like people will poke further and I'm like, hey, just this is what I'm thinking right now. But no, I don't feel that in every now and then, but not as much as I used to. I used to be very insecure about what I said and how people perceived me and whatnot. It's whatever. I'm 30. I've I've <laughs> lived a pretty cool life so far and I've done a lot of cool shit. I'm fairly happy with what I've done. And right now, everything after this is just icing on the cake and I'm just having fun with it. Oh my God, did I get the exact same answer? That was the exact same as last time. Oh no. That was E-N-F-J-A. This is E-N-F-P-A. I don't know what that means. I'm more extroverted than introverted. Yes, I'm more intuitive than observant. 69. 69. What up, bro? Woo! Yeah, I... A lot of the stuff with me is like, I'm not... I'm smart about certain things and I'm observant about a lot of things, but not not the stuff that would... It's more like street smarts than it is like actual like math and shit. And I'm more of a go with the flow and have fun type of person than I am like a figure everything out and be smarter than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, feeling rather than thinking. Uh, prospecting rather than judging. This trait reflects your approach 69 to work. 69 again. And, uh, okay. Uh, assertive or turbulent. This trait underpins all others. My identity. What was it last time? It was 70% absurd... Uh, Absur er, assertive last time. I was 61% judging last time. That 69 again! I was 76% feeling last time. I was 51% intuitive. And I was 60% extroverted. I feel like this one is way more accurate to who I actually am than that last one. I definitely feel like I was answering some stuff for the video. There's probably a couple of answers in there where I was like, well, I don't want it to look bad. And I probably, <laughs> them, like, knowing people were watching. I think this one was a lot more honest. The campaigner personality is a true free spirit. They are often the life of the party, but unlike types in the explorer role group, campaigners are less interested in the sheer excitement and pleasure of the moment than they are in enjoying the social and emotional connections they make with others. Very interesting. Charming, independent, energetic, and compassionate. No, do go on, Test. Say more <laughs> nice things about me. The 7% of the population that they comprise can certainly be felt in any crowd. More than just sociable people pleasers, though, campaigners like all their diplomat cousins are shaped by their intuitive end quality, quality, allowing them to read between the lines with curiosity and energy. They tend to see life as a big, complex puzzle where everything is connected. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> campaigners see it through a prism of emotion, compassion, and mysticism and are always looking for a deeper meaning. Well, not always, but I do like the deeper meaning of things. Campaigners will bring an energy that oftentimes thrusts them into the spotlight, held up by their peers as a leader and a guru. But this isn't always where independence-loving campaigners want to be. Worse still, if they find themselves beset by the administrative tasks and routine maintenance that can accompany a leadership position. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the leadership position. Like... Yeah. You could say that this is a leadership role on this channel for this community, and that 
I mean, I don't feel bad about that because the administrative tasks and routine maintenance of that is something that's enjoyable and something that's fun to do, but I guess it's because it's more free form and I can kind of do what I want. I guess if you were like a politician or something like that, then yeah, that would weigh very heavily on me and I would hate all of those tasks, but also just because I know nothing about politics and I fucking hate it. Computer self-esteem is dependent on their ability to come up with original solutions. You and, and they me, need bro. to know that they have the freedom <laughs> to be innovative. We, they can I hate politics too. patients will become dejected if they get trapped in a boring role. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually how I am or if that's because I do YouTube and now that's how I've become. Well, I guess if you become that, then you are that. I guess it doesn't make a difference. Again, you change constantly as time goes on. But yeah, if I was in a, a role where I didn't really get to do what I want, it's because I've tasted what it's like to do to be my own boss and do what I want that now it's like yes this is what I absolutely love doing and keeping like my own freedom is very important to me creatively don't lose that little spark of madness <laughs> 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 most of your head is a Lucky blazing flame of madness then it's kind of hard to lose it Luckily, campaigners know how to relax really and they are perfectly capable of switching from a passionate driven idealist in the workplace to that imaginative and enthusiastic free spirit on the dance floor <laughs> The dance floor. The dance floor. Often with a suddenness that can surprise even their closest friends. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, hey, let's do this thing. Oh, I have this idea for this thing. Let's go. And then everyone else is like, well, you didn't, you've never mentioned this before. <laughs> your personality type needs to be careful, however. If they rely too much on their intuition, assume or anticipate too much about a friend's motivations, they can misread the signals and frustrate plans that a more straightforward approach would have made simple. Yup. That can definitely happen, especially if, we're, if we have to go do a thing. Like, if something has to be done for me, I'm very bad about putting off all of the details of it for a long time. Or if we just want to plan, like, a day where we take a day off to do something, I'm, I'm just bad at getting that across because I just, like, live in the moment and it's like, hey, now is good. Campaigners will spend a lot of time exploring social relationships feelings and ideas before they find something that really rings true but when they finally do find their place in the world their imagination empathy and courage are likely to produce incredible results wow that's what youtube was for me for a long time i had no idea what i was doing and i was exploring all these other options and no one ever understood like video games the way i wanted to be understood and i always felt like a really weird person and an outcast and an outsider and nobody liked things the way i did and i was a weirdo um, so my social relationships always suffered from that, but finding YouTube and finding like-minded people who would come, because if you're uploading stuff that you're interested in, people who are interested in what you're interested in are going to find it, and then you're going to share a lot of the same sort of mindsets, I believe. So it took a long time for me to find those relationships and feelings and ideas before I really started to understand who I am and felt comfortable in who I am. And that really only started happening in the last couple of years. And I feel like right now, I'm the happiest, most confident, most secure I've ever been. There's always a little work to go, and I'm sure when I'm 40, I'd be like, no, <laughs> I didn't know anything. But right now, compared to who I was at 25, 26, 27, crisis. I feel like I'm much better. And I went through a phase of worrying that, oh, I'm too loud in my videos, and people are kind of annoyed with that, and I want to change my content. But now I'm like, no, just do whatever you're good at, man. Pe people like that. Put, put your energy back into it and have fun with it and like just crack jokes and do whatever you want. I don't I don't need to be the best at video games. I don't need to be the best at what I'm doing and I don't need to be extremely skilled at it, but I can definitely have a lot of fun doing it. And I feel like that that's what my strength is. I definitely and lately, agree. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but over the last couple of weeks, I I just sat down and I was like, you know what, fuck this. I'm just gonna do whatever I want and really have fun with it again. And like talk to Robin about the editing and I was like, we need to just we need to just do whatever we want and have fun with it and stuff has gotten for me a lot more fun over the last couple of weeks and hopefully it shows in the content because i feel like i'm making the best content i have in years let's just go to the conclusion few personality types are as creative and charismatic as campaigners known for their idealism and enthusiasm campaigners are good at dealing with unexpected challenges and brightening the lives of those around them campaigners imaginations is invaluable in many areas including their own personal growth so there you have it apparently now in 2020 i am a campaigner i'm an enfpa or an ENF enfpt which is assertive or turbulent is what they mean. Again, I'd be curious, 
like go back and watch that other video i, I leave it linked in the description um, right. watch that first and then watch this one i'd be very curious to see how different it is and how similar it is in different ways um and then let me know down in the comments what it was like but i look forward to taking this again in another three years and then <laughs> we'll see how different i am then and if i've gotten more confidence and if i'm better as a person or worse at certain things who knows that's the beauty of life baby it's not a competition especially not with yourself you should just learn and grow and try and be as the work towards the best of your abilities and try to be the best person you can be in the given day that you were given every single day and that's all you can do that's all I'm trying to do, at least. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll see you all in the next one. Okay. Okay, there it is. That's it. So that was pretty interesting. So he's a campaigner now, while in the very first one he was a protagonist. And obviously a lot has changed. Obviously over time you're going to change throughout the years. Your personality is going to change and everything, so... It's no surprise that he obviously has evolved into the person that he is now. Like me, I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of introverted a little. I tend to be usually alone a lot, so I don't know what it is with me, but that that's unfortunately how I am. I'm always probably like the like I'll probably always be that one guy that's always out in like, you know, in those, you know, parties, I'll be always like that one outcast. <laughs> I'll be that one guy and out all alone while everybody else is together. It's like, yeah, I'm one, I'm that person. And when it comes to like someone who's upset, I'm usually I I always try to cheer them up as much as I can to the best as I can I always try to cheer them up and try to put them put a smile on their face by telling them that they're an amazing person etc you know I've, I've dealt with it a lot I deal with it a lot and it ain't it ain't a uh, stressful thing to deal with but it's like, I think, you know, soothing to do. It's as weird as it sounds. One day I will, ta I will take this test for myself. Like, uh, there are some, some of the questions I kind of don't understand. So I really, really would need to look into that at some point in the future. But I don't know when I'll ever fucking take that. But it's interesting to see him, like, you know, obviously he say that he obviously changed from the previous test that he took. So, there's that. I might check out the original one he did. I, I might. I don't know if I will. But honestly, I think that was really well, that was really fun to watch. So I think I'll end this video here. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Be sure to ring that bell to be part of the notification squad. Be sure also be sure to also check out my Instagram because I make a lot of Markiplier, Jack Sept Guy, even myself. I also do Act with the Cosplays on there, so go check it out. Be sure to also check out my Tumblr and my Discord in the description as well. So until next time, JRDL96 signing out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.